today we're going to look at Module 3, Lesson 11, Absolute Value, Magnitude, and Distance. So we're going to continue working with positive and negative numbers and the number line and how they relate to zero. So let's take a look, once I can find my mouse, here we go, at the opening exercise in your notes. I already drew three pairs of points on the number line, and you could draw that on your number line. The red dots are negative four and four. The blue dots are negative two and a half and positive two and a half. And the green dots are negative ten and ten. So what can we say about the relationship between each pair of numbers? Between the red dots, the blue dots, the green dots, what can we say? about their relationship. What about them? Exactly. Each pair are opposites. So what do we know about opposites and their relationship to zero? Exactly. Both numbers in each pair So each number in the pair is the same distance from zero. It would make things so much easier if we had a way, a word, a name, something that we could use to define, to explain that distance from zero. If there was a word that we could use to represent that distance. <gasps> There is. There is a word. We just saw that every number and its opposite are the same distance from zero on the number line. The absolute value of a number is the distance between the number and zero on a number line. In other words, a number and its opposite have the same absolute value. Here's that word again. So let's take a look at the number six. How many spaces is it from zero? Everybody? Six. So the absolute value of six is six. But what about negative six? What is the absolute value of negative six? How many spaces away from zero is it? Everybody? Six. six. How come it's not negative 6? If I dig a hole 3 feet into the ground, is that negative 3 feet or is it still 3 feet in distance? Still 3 feet in distance. If I take 2 steps forward, isn't that the same distance if I take 2 steps backwards? You can't have a negative distance. So it's six spaces from zero. It doesn't matter if it's a negative six or a positive six. They're both six units from zero. So to summarize, absolute value is the distance from zero. So here we have negative three, and it's three units away from zero. <coughs> here we have positive four, and it's four units away from zero. So the way we would write it is, if we wanted to find the absolute value of negative 3, we use these symbols. When you see those two lines around the number, those two lines mean absolute value. So you would read this as the absolute value of negative 3, <coughs> excuse me, equals 3. Here, the absolute value of 4 equals 4. Can we make a claim about all absolute values? All absolute values are always what? 
Like always gonna be what? Opposites do have the same absolute value. That's not the claim I was looking for though, because these two numbers are not opposites. So what do both of their absolute values have in common? What's the same about both of them? Well, they both like not absolute value, but. but All right. Well, let's let's think about it some more then. Okay. Let's think about it some more. See if we can come up with a claim. Here's another example. The absolute value of 10, we already discussed, is written as this, the two bars around the number. On the number line, count the number of units from 10 to 0. So how many units is it from 10 to 0? How many units? 10. So the absolute value of 10 is 10. This is in your notes. What other number can you think of also has an absolute value of 10. What other number is 10 units away from 0? What other number is 10 units away from 0? Absolutely. Ah, that's funny. Absolutely. Get it? I didn't even mean to do that. That was funny. The absolute value of negative 10 is also 10. What have we noticed about all of our absolute values so far? They're all what, Lauren? Mm, yeah, but what? Not exactly, but sort of. Mm, not exact, yes, but no. Positive. Absolute value is always a positive, neg a positive number because distance can't be negative. So at the bottom of your note page, is that definition, so you should highlight it or star it so that you study that definition. The absolute value of a number is the distance between that number and zero on the number line. And then I want you to add this to the bottom of your notes to remind you absolute value can never be a negative number. Let's continue. So let's look at this chart. Negative 6. What is the absolute value of negative 6? Where here is negative 6, here is 0, what is the distance from negative 6 to 0? So we could write the absolute value of negative 6 equals 6. What's a different number? Not negative 6, I want a different number that also has an absolute value of 6. Positive 6. Number 2 is positive 8. So we plot that on the number line. How far is that from 0? Eight. So we write the absolute value of 8 equals positive 8. What's another number that also has an absolute value of 8? Negative 8. Over here, that has the same distance of 8. So here's negative 1. How far is it from 0? So the absolute value of negative 1 is 1. What's another number that has the absolute value of 1? 1. Positive 1, that's right. Now, uh-oh, Mrs. Owens is in a little bit of trouble. <coughs> the bank teller there called her. Because she had a checkbook balance of negative $45. What was the magnitude of the amount overdrawn? First of all, overdrawn is suppose you have um, $50 in your checkbook. I have $50 in my bank account. I write a check for $95. Did I have enough money? No. So the bank's still going to pay the $95 to whatever store you wrote your check in. But then the bank's going to come after you and be like, uh, you owe us $45. You had 50 you spent 95 so you owe us $45. So that's what that means to be overdrawn on your checkbook. Now, here's another word that we're not familiar with. Magnitude. The magnitude of a quantity is found by taking the absolute value of its numerical part. So... 
If she owes the bank $45, how are we going to find the magnitude? Well, let's find the absolute value of negative 45. So the absolute value of negative 45 equals 45. So now we can answer the question in a full, complete sentence by restating Mrs. Owens overdrew her checking account by $45. <clears throat> yeah. So what you say, nature is falling to the uh, uh, maybe. Maybe. All right, let's take a look at the next example. Maria was sick with the flu, and her weight change as a result of it is represented by negative four pounds. How much weight did Maria lose? So the directions want us to use absolute value to find the magnitude of each quantity. So the absolute value of negative 4 is 4. So to answer the question, Maria lost 4 pounds. Try five, six, and seven on your own. So let's take a look at the answers. For number five, Jeffrey owes his friend five dollars. So the absolute value of negative five equals positive five. So Jeffrey has a five dollar debt. The elevation of Niagara Falls, which is located between Lake Erie and Lake Ontario, is 326 feet. How far is this above sea level? The absolute value is 326, is 326, so it is 326 feet above sea level. And number seven, how far below zero is negative 16 degrees Celsius? So the absolute value of negative 16 equals 16. So negative 16 degrees Celsius is 16 degrees below zero. You should have your full complete sentences for all your answers here. <clears throat> And now let's take a look at number eight. <clears throat> Frank received a monthly statement for his college savings account. It listed a deposit of $100 as positive $100. It listed a withdrawal of $25 as negative $25. The statement showed an overall ending balance of $835.50. See a lot of question marks here. So the first thing. How much money did Frank add to his account? Two, how much did he take out? Three, what is the total amount Frank has saved for college? So we're still using absolute value to determine each magnitude. Same set of directions as four through seven. So let's answer question one first. How much money did he add? <coughs> how much did he add? All right, so the absolute value of $100 is 100. So Frank added $100 to his account. Now let's answer the second question. How much did he take out? The absolute value of negative 25 equals 25. So Frank took $25 out of his account. So what is the total amount Frank has saved for college? Well, the absolute value of $835.50. Can I have decimals in my absolute value? Yes, yes. Absolutely. Yes, yeah, the number.
answered all parts of the question, so we're all set. Now, we're going to do selected exercises. So if you're following at home, you're going to notice that we're going to jump and skip a couple problems. So we're going to start with number nine. And let's look at number nine. Meg is playing a card game with her friend Iona. The cards have positive and negative numbers printed on them. So this isn't your standard deck of cards. So it's got negatives on it. Meg exclaims, the absolute value of the number on my card equals eight. So what number of cards does she have? Awesome playing cards with Meg. She's going to keep screaming out what cards she's got. I'll play cards with her anytime. What card is she holding in her hand? What numbers have an absolute value of 8? What could it be? Well, she could have a negative 8 in her hand because the absolute value of negative 8 is 8. Is that the only possibility? <clears throat> right, or if she has a positive 8, the absolute value is 8. So now let's answer the question. Meg has either an 8 or a negative 8 on her card. Anybody concerned or confused why it could be either one? Both of those have the absolute value of 8. Alright, we're going to skip 10 and go to number 11. Which of the following situations can be represented by the absolute value of 10? Check all that apply. The temperature is 10 degrees below zero. Write that as an integer. Can I write that integer as absolute value of 10? No, because it's asking for the integer. It's not asking for the distance or the absolute value. The size of Harold's debt if he owes $10. Can we represent that with the absolute value of 10? Yeah. How far is t negative 10 how far negative 10 is from 0 on a number line? Can I represent that with the absolute value of 10? 10 degrees is how many degrees above 0? Is that the absolute value of 10? Yeah. Take a look at number 12. Julia used absolute value to find the distance between 0 and 6 on a number line. Then she wrote a similar statement to represent the distance between 0 and negative 6. Well, here's her work. <clears throat> Is she correct? Is she correct? Everybody? No. She is not correct. The distance is 6 units whether you go from 0 to 6 or 0 to negative 6. So the absolute value of negative 6 should also be 6. But Julia said the absolute value was negative 6. So she was not correct. Doesn't matter if you go from negative to 0 or whether you go from positive to 0. Either way, the absolute value is going to be a positive number because distance can't be negative. Right, because the distance is 6. You want to explain why it can't be a negative number also. All right, so let's continue. Now we're going to jump to number 15. I love this question. I'm going to make you think, okay? In math class, Carl and Angela are debating about integers and absolute value. Now, Carl said one integer, I'm sorry, two integers 
can have the same absolute value. So two different numbers can have the same absolute value. But Angela is like, uh-uh, one integer can have two absolute values. Who's right? Carl or Angela? Hmm? Can one absolute value have two integers? Or can two absolute values have one integer? Who's right? Who is it going to be? Everybody? Everybody, who is it? Carl is right. Carl is right. An integer and its opposite are the same distance. Sorry about this. An integer and its opposite are the same distance from zero. So they have the same absolute values because absolute value is the distance between the number and zero. So two different numbers, meaning opposites, will always have the same absolute value. <clears throat> Here's another question that I love. So let me see if you understand what absolute value is. Not just can you do it, do you understand what it means? Well, there's Jamie. He's telling his math teacher, give me any absolute value, and I can tell you two numbers that have the same absolute value. Is Jamie correct? For any given absolute value, there will always be two numbers that can have that value. Yeah, think about that one a minute. I see some no's. Some people are shaking their head no. Some people are shaking their head yes. Who can give me an example of an absolute value that doesn't have two integers? Can you think of a number? Ryan, what do you think? Ah, oh, oh, smarty pants, I thought I was going to trick you all, but you got it. Well, normally Jamie would be correct if it wasn't for zero. If it wasn't for zero, Jamie would be correct. So Jamie is not correct because zero is its own opposite. Only one number has an absolute value of zero, and that would be zero. If Jamie said, for any given absolute value except for zero, I can give you two integers, then would he be correct? Yeah. Yup. Poor Jamie, he got tricked. He forgot about my hero zero. And finally, we're going to skip to number 19. Which is farther from zero? Negative seven and three-fourths? or 7 and 1 half. Use absolute value to defend your answer. Well, the absolute value of negative 7 and 3 fourths is 7 and 3 fourths. The absolute value of 7 and a half is 7 and a half. So which is further from zero? Which one is further from zero? Exactly, seven and three fourths. The number that is farther from seven from zero is seven and three fourths because the absolute value is seven and three fourths. Absolute value is a number's distance from zero. So when you compare the two absolute values, you can tell that 7 and 3 fourths is further away because it's greater than 7 and 1 half. And you should be writing this down because you are asked to defend your answer. So in closing, if two numbers have the same absolute value, what is true about those two numbers? Any two numbers that have the same absolute value must be opposites. Can the absolute value of a number be a negative number? 
No, absolute value can never be negative because it's distance. You're counting units. If you're counting to the right or you're counting to the left or on a vertical number line, if you're counting up or you're counting down, you're still counting distance. So that can never be a negative number. And how does absolute value determine magnitude? Well, the absolute value represents the magnitude. Okay? We use the absolute value to find the magnitude.